Hello, this is Manash Patel from IchimukuTrade.com. Today is January 19th, 2013. This is our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the global stock market. Today we're going to cover everything from the North America to Europe to <coughs> Middle East to Asia as far as exchanges are concerned, stock market exchanges. And you're going to be able to see what is the hottest countries uh, up to this point right now and what potentially can be the hottest country for this year. If you look at last year, <coughs> Uh, we basically had Malaysia, uh, Turkey, and Switzerland leading uh, a lot of the global markets, believe it or not, out there. Uh, they're the ones that trended the best uh, last year. And so let's see kind of what we see uh, towards the close to the end of the month here in January and see, see what's going on, see if those countries continue their trends, and also to see which ones are going to be the hottest countries this year, uh, to, and also compare them to see <clears throat> where, where we stand as far as in the U.S. side or Europe or Australia, wherever you're living. Um, this is our normal disclaimer. This is state. This is for education use only. Uh, we're not soliciting you to buy or sell any particular instrument at all. Uh, today, we're going to pretty much use uh, eSignal and TD Ameritrade from Thinkorswim for our charting platforms. Here are my contact details here. Uh, you could email us here at info at eiicapital.com or you could go to our website ichimukutrade.com and access any of our <coughs> uh, trading uh, resources that are available out there or you could contact us here at any of the office locations here. Okay, so let's go and start looking at all the global markets and <coughs> let's start off by looking at Germany first <coughs> and you could see, uh, if you guys don't remember uh, if you're new to this, on the left hand side is basically my daily chart on the right hand side is basically my weekly chart um, here we'd like to focus mainly on weekly uh, reason why that kind of gives you a long-term picture and you could see here from the uh, chart here we kind of hit the resistance here kind of bounced off there which is at 77.8407 uh, so that's kind of where we bounced off uh, for the Germany DAX <coughs> and you can see the next resistance is going to be at 79.4671 and the support's going to be at 73,6302. Um, you know, you kind of need to wait for a pullback for the German DAX. Uh, if you have not entered any positions at all, if you have, just keep your stops tight because you're kind of butting right to the next resistance. But if you're new uh, and trying to add new positions, I'll be very, very careful since we're at a major resistance right now. We kind of need a pullback. The ideal pullback level would be, as I mentioned, 76,302. <coughs> Let's go look at France. Actually, let's go look at UK first. Uh, here is UK. <coughs> Here's the UK, uh, and you can see it's kind of uh, it broke this resistance here at 6102. Um, <coughs> UK here, FTSE kind of traversed across, and the next resistance level it's kind of coming across to 6284. Uh, but be very careful. Again, this is kind of starting to get overextended too, just like a lot of the U uh, global markets out there. So you kind of need a pullback here, but this could keep on going. So uh, I would be very careful because you're close to the next resistance level. Again, here for this one too, uh, I definitely would be uh, not adding any new positions unless they look really, really good. And kind of wait for a pullback to occur before you add any new positions because it's kind of deadly uh, since you're at the highs here and your, your reward's going to be very limited as far as things are concerned. Uh, <clears throat> so that was France. Um, Sorry, that was uh, UK FTSE. Here's France. You could see that this week here, we kind of closed right around the resistance level of 37.4298. Uh, the next resistance is going to be about 39.2847. And support's going to be about 35.35. Again, this is one that if you're going to add new positions, it's going to be really good. Otherwise, wait for a pullback before you add any new positions there. <coughs> Amsterdam. Amsterdam, that you're looking here. Uh, still got a little ways before it gets to its resistance, a major resistance at uh, 357.72. Support's going to be basically around 337.70. Uh, but you can see from the daily, it's kind of just chopping around at uh, this minor resistance at 352 right now. <clears throat> so it's, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens here on Amsterdam. But this thing's just consolidating now uh, to a point it may just sit there and start doing the pullback to about 337.70. Spain. <coughs> If you look here, it also is at a major resistance level at 86.51. If it breaks that, it's going to go to about 90.33.12. And support <coughs> is at 
is going to be <coughs> excuse me 82 63 98 moving forward um, this one's kind of getting overextended too so it kind of needs a pullback so we're expecting a pullback in this one too coming up um, <clears throat> you're going to notice that for a lot of the world indexes out there, uh, there are, most of them are pretty much major resistances and they kind of need a pullback moving forward now um, this is <clears throat> Italy uh, Italy here, uh, next resistance level is going to be 17,847 uh, is the next resistance level and support is going to be 16,232 uh, this also is getting overextended it kind of needs a pullback too <clears throat> Oslo here it's broken its resistance level there at 464.93 because it closed above it <clears throat> now you need kind of conviction for it to get to the next level which is at 488.34 support on this one's going to be 443.63 moving forward <clears throat> Switzerland, Switzerland which is one of the countries last year that was a uh, major major move up as you could see from here <clears throat> it is at a resistance level right now it kind of closed right at it too, which is interesting. At 73.64, if it breaks out, then it's got another 10 point more points before it gets it there and get to the next resistance level of 76.73. Uh, pull <coughs> support on this one's going to be 68.48. Uh, it is overextended because, as you can see, this thing's been running way, way here since it's reached the bottom basically in June 4 of last year. It's been kind of on a tear up, <coughs> and you can see here from the daily, it's been going up too here. Uh, so that's been the most interesting one out there. Uh, next one is going to be Turkey. <clears throat> I feel like a turkey here. This thing is on a tear too going up. Uh, support is going to be basically 42.22.79. Uh, really, there's no resistance level because it's at an all-time high, believe it or not. So this one's been an interesting one that's been going up up there drastically. And notice the trend is still continuing on this year, just like Switzerland. Uh, so this is still moving forward. And again, this one also started roughly around June. So both Switzerland and Turkey started June of last year and still going up drastically. Uh, <coughs> uh, and still ma making their move this year, beginning into this year. So it should be interesting to see where, exactly where that goes. Um, let's go now to South Africa. <clears throat> you can see South Africa has been moving too. It, didn't, it kind of did the June thing too. South Africa is moving up here. Uh, resistance level, there is no resistance level since it's all time high. Support is going to be basically 34489. Uh, so South Africa is going to join all the uh, moves moving up. <clears throat> so now Russia. You look at Russia. Russia, it's it's close to its resistance level at 1608. Uh, once it gets there, it definitely probably will do a pullback because it's at a major resistance level here. Pullback we're kind of expecting is basically around 1484. If it does break 1608, the next level is going to be 1666 moving forward. <clears throat> so that's it for over there. Let's go over to Middle East. Remember, there's not much bar data here for the weekly, so that's kind of why the clouds look a little choppy. Uh, but again, resistance level on this one is going to be about 71.73, and support is going to be basically right here at 69.98. If it breaks to 71.73, then it's going to basically go to 74.35. But this thing looks like it's just consolidating, so I think it's going to hold there. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if it doesn't. As for Saudi, <coughs> Dubai. Let's go to Abu Dhabi first. Abu Dhabi. Uh, <coughs> Resistance level, next one's going to be at 2804. Support basically is going to be 2708. It's broken out, it needs a pullback, so we're kind of expecting it to pull back to at least 2708. And at that point, it'll be a good test level to see exactly what it's going to do. Continue on this trend going up or sit there and try to make a move down. But Dubai is kind of coming out of it since June of last year too. Notice a lot of these countries kind of bottomed out in June last year and a lot of countries have started to move up since then. <coughs> um, sorry, that was Abu Dhabi. Here's Dubai. Dubai is right at a resistance level at 1777.16. Support is going to be at 1670. This one definitely needs a pullback so we think that this is going to stop here and pull back to uh, at least hopefully to 7, 1670 but it could support a minor resistance level here right at 1700. Okay, that's it for the Middle East. Let's go to Asia. Let's start with Australia. 
you can see Australia has been moving nicely since June. Some pullbacks here, but this is still moving nicely. It's at a resistance level right now, 47.82. Next resistance is going to be 49.15, and support is going to be basically 45.78 moving forward on this one. Okay. Uh, <coughs> then we're going to go. Let's just go this way. Malaysia <coughs> is next. If you look at Malaysia. This was moving drastically. Notice it's done a little pullback here. So this is kind of starting to slow down compared to Turkey, Switzerland, and South Africa. Uh, so it's resistance level now, right now, 1696. That is, there's no other resistance level there because this is all time high there. Uh, so 1696 is resistance. Support is going to be roughly about 1645 moving forward. Next is going to be the Singapore market. You can see here from the Singapore market, <coughs> just kind of like a little consolidation level right now. Uh, we're at a major resistance level at 53.83. Support is roughly going to be around, around 5200. If it does break 53, uh, sorry, 53, 54.12, sorry, is a resistance level. If it does break that level, then it has a chance here to get to about 56.34. Uh, yeah, but if it's going to think it needs a little pullback here to about 4,200. And at that point, it can make a move to, to basically get up to about 5,600 if it's going to even get a chance there. If it does it that way, then it has a chance of breaking there. Uh, but we have to wait and see to see exactly what's going to happen there. <coughs> okay, so that was basically Singapore. If you look at the Indian Sensex market, uh, you can see again we're at the resistance level of 20,000. Uh, if we break that, it's going to have a chance to go to 20,500. Uh, support on this one's going to be about 19,167. Uh, and you kind of need it to pull back now. Uh, here, you could see here, it's just getting kind of overextended. So it needs a pullback drastically, just like all of the other countries out there. Uh, if you don't get a pullback, then these things are going to get into extreme over, over, uh, so <coughs> over, <coughs> into extreme conditions to a point. Uh, when they do go down, they're going to go down drastic. So just take that into a note. Uh, into effect. Tokyo, Tokyo again is also at a major resistance at 914. If it breaks out, it could go to 933. But support basically on this one is going to be about 851 moving forward. <coughs> Japan here is going to be at a resistance too at 10,979. Uh, if it breaks that, then it could go to about 11,833. Sorry, yeah, 11,883. Uh, support on this one's going to be about basically 10,095. Japan's been basically running drastically right now. It definitely needs a pullback too. And you could kind of see that here from the daily too. It's been on a, a major, major tear. Uh, and a lot of people even actually talking about it in the news here. So it'll be interesting to see how long this thing's going to keep on going without a pullback. Uh, Korea. <clears throat> if you look at Korea, just doing really nothing. This is kind of one of the countries that's been uh, kind of stagnant as, as far as Asia is concerned. A lot of them have been trending, but this one hasn't just consolidated between 272 and 257. So uh, this one could be interesting if it could sit there and pop out this year or it could sit there and fail completely. So this one would definitely keep an eye on to watch to see exactly when it breaks its consolidation pattern because it's going to go one way or another when it does. Hong Kong. <coughs> if you look at Hong Kong, it's at its resistance level 2, 23,647. And support on this one's going to be about 22,656 moving forward. Um, and then lastly, a lot of people want to hear about China. <coughs> China, you could see here, it does not even been trending. It's been going up, which is pretty much in a big consolidation pattern. It's in a major resistance right now, 24.25. Next one's going to be at 24.71, and so forth, it's going to be 23.18. Uh, but this has got to be a while before it could come out of the cloud and basically go sediment bullish. Uh, maybe towards the end of the, the middle of this year, if it keeps on where it's at, consolidates or just maintains exactly where it's at, it, it could sit there and start a push to the bullish side. But this will be interesting one to see because this one, uh, along with Korea, kind of being the laggards. Korea at least is consolidating, but the sediment's bullish. But this one, sediment's below the cloud, so uh, right in the cloud now. But uh, this is kind of weak uh, compared to all the countries out in Asia right now. Let's go over to North America, so we'll cover Canada first. If you look at Canada, uh, it's been going up. Uh, it's getting ready to hit its resistance at 12,768. Uh, it definitely needs a pullback. 
if it could sit there and pull back to at least about I would say about 12,500 that would be a great pullback level and then it could sit there and make a move to keep on going up but definitely needs a pullback moving forward uh, another country I like a lot that we've been trading a lot is Mexico uh, look at Mexico it's been on a tear not just the country here but also the currency too uh, so definitely look at this one uh, but here this has been trending for a long time again just like in the middle of June here this thing has been, well, this one actually is in August. Uh, but you could see overall, this thing's been trending for a long time. Um, and this was the pullback it had. But basically, at the beginning of August, the thing came on a tear and started going up. Uh, so this has been one of the hottest uh, hot countries in uh, the Americas right now. Brazil, really not doing anything consolidating between basically 63,000 and about 60,000 so it's really not doing anything right now it needs to really hold 60,000 uh, 60,567 in order for even it have a chance to break out of a consolidation pattern We're really not showing us anything at all right now Colombia really doing nothing at all you could see here from the charts doing nothing uh, resistance level is going to be basically here at 13,500 and 50 support on this one's going to be 11,829 um, moving forward. <coughs> Santiago, Chile. Uh, notice it just basically sentiments broken out of the cloud. Looks good right now. It's still consolidating into the consolidation range. So it kind of broke out of the consolidation uh, where the support was basically 4,100. 4, it held, broke out of the cloud. Now it's trying to get to about 4,600, 4,633 to be exact. Uh, and pretty much which is the top of the consolidation range so we got to see exactly what happens when it gets to consolidation with a breakout it's still staying it uh, but that's definitely one to watch Argentina uh, same thing consolidation but look at it it's basically broken out too needs a drastic pullback it's at a resistance level of 3200 uh, needs a pullback to at least about 30 30 31 if it does break 20 32 13 it could go to about 3440 okay and now let's go over to the US side here's the ES <coughs> good thing is we had a resistance level of 1477 we kind of closed a little above it not too much next resistance level is basically 1498 uh, and you can see that here from the charts it seems like we want to go to about 1500 this things have just been trickling trickling upwards uh, from this big move here towards the end of the year and, and we may either stop here for a little minor pullback or we may continue to go up pullback levels on this one the minor one's going to be basically around 1463 uh, the major one's going to be roughly around about four, uh, I would say about 1420 to about 1431 roughly okay that's the ES if you look at the Dow futures uh, here same thing uh, we've broken the resistance a uh, little the resistance was at 13,552 closed a little above it so we may have a possibility going to about 13,674 uh, before we do a pullback pullback level is going to be about 13,409 and then the next one's going to be basically around 13,100 if you look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ you could see here still struggling to be bullish, which is interesting. Uh, you would kind of think the technology would lead right now, but it hasn't. Financials are kind of coming back. Uh, but NASDAQ is kind of struggling right now. It's at a, my, a major resistance level here. Uh, a lot of people looking at this as basically a head and shoulder pattern here at 20,000, 27,000, uh, 20, 20, ah, 2,745. Uh, so that's the key level to see what's exactly what's going to happen here. And a support on this one's going to be basically 2,681 moving forward. Uh, Russell, has, uh, which is pretty much consists of small caps, you know, January and February are typically small caps take a run. They have. And you could see that the basically Russell's at its all-time high right now. Broke its resistance level 863 uh, towards the end of last uh, end of the year last year, and going into this uh, January. And it probably will continue to go until February because that's when small caps kind of die, start dying off. But January and February is a big month for small caps. Okay, and so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my voice is a lot better, so it should be better. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us here or contact any of us at our office locations. Thank you. Bye-bye.